I've been knowing Brother Makati for many, many years. I really don't remember how many years. When I first started working with him in Ashirvad, and those were afternoon classes, I've seen that strength, the zeal in him to teach uh, children who were absolutely non English speakers English and Hindi. And that zeal, and that's some 25 years ago, maybe, if I'm not mistaken, that zeal, that energy is still there. When it comes to children, they are God for brother. And he, on no terms would he compromise anything that goes against the right of the children. Yeah. I came to India in 1960. Uh, I have to say I spent my first Christmas in St. Mary's Dum Dum with all those children. At that time there was an orphanage and that gave me my first glimpse of how school runs. Uh, I was a bit dismayed because, well, it wasn't the picture of school that I wanted to see anywhere in the world, but especially in this new home of mine, India. Also, for the first few years of my uh, teaching in India, corporal punishment was allowed. And corporal punishment uh, meant that if the child didn't know his, stop and say his for the moment, uh, he was beaten. Which of course today is seen as it is criminal. At that time the care of the children was a lot less focused than it is today. And in me, it gradually began to uh, be clear that our children were suffering far too much. Children were staying up very late at night, coming to school groggy in the morning, forcing themselves to do exams, and then leaving the classroom, the parent grabbing the uh, question paper. What did you do for that? You mean to see you did that? I saw a, a father dragging a son out of class and beating him. Then kids who reached extreme pressure for the reasons that I mentioned earlier, they chose suicide. And for the reasons that I mentioned, it's easy to see that suicide was a more comfortable choice than going on with the humiliation that they suffered for failing exams. The first such example in my memory is Saha Nepal. Saha Nepal, she committed suicide, an 11 year old girl in a good school. She went home from school with a fail mark on her English spelling or English grammar or something. Not a final exam. And she went to her room and she decided she would commit suicide. She was the only child of her parents. In 1996, Edmund Rice was beatified. He was the first Christian brother, and Christian brothers all over the world were invited to mark the occasion. So what I did here in Calcutta is we got a play going which, we, uh, which was called Alor Pote. It was done by a Jesuit friend of mine, uh, Father Saju, he is now called, and he was a professional dancer, or rather I should say a qualified dancer, 
and he uh, accepted my invitation to tell the story of Edmund in a Bengali dance drama which was called Aror Pote. It went down very well. Rajesh Aurora and Abbas Bengali stayed with me in my little flat I lived that time in Benia Bukur and as we were cleaning up one said so Edmund Rice changed education in Ireland and the other said why can't we do something like that in India and that was the light the bulb experience that I had and I said this is great let's start an organization to do something about that that was called serve I cannot say I formed Serve. There were the three of us whom I mentioned a little while ago, Rajesh and Abbas and I. We formed it because all three of us felt that the education system that we were using wasn't really helping the children to cope with their lives. It was only knowledge based and then marks based and rank based, but nothing about growth. And we felt that was somehow cheating the youngsters. And so we said, let's try something new. As I said a moment ago, Edmund Rice changed the face of Ireland. I couldn't redo it. So that's what we aimed to do. The children must like you. If they don't like you, very little good things are going to happen in that classroom. You can beat them to learning their stuff but they will have terrible memories of you. And uh, as I know, bad memories of your teacher colors your whole uh, post-school life. So the first thing is, you have to have some ways of getting the kids to like you. Secondly, you must love your job. It's not enough to have an MSc or a, a BA honors or something. You must really like the business of sharing what you have learned with kids, not just doing it merely as a job. Many teachers, and I understand, it's the only job they can get. And I, God knows I sympathize. Jobs are hard to get, but the reality is, it's the sort of a job you have to be born to. We haven't succeeded. People know about SERVE, but how far it's affecting the lives of students, I'm afraid not very much. This is partly because we don't have national influence and we haven't got the finance to have national influence. Our dream is to get on wide social media, get movie, get on TV, talk to people, suggest to people and so on. But that costs a lot of money and we don't have it. Why don't we have it? Because the objective to take the suffering out of the Indian classroom is not a measurable commodity. If you were, for example, trying to, let us say, do something for cancer people, then you could count the number of cancer people whom you have helped, and so in other fields. But we cannot have statistics for how we have helped children to not suffer in classroom. That's not a measurable commodity.